Okay, let's just go through what's new in this version. Uh, it's pushed out a little early. That's because the Waves 12's plugins are being rendered upside down and flipped. Now I have a fix for that, but it's quite involved. Um, and I want to get this version out because it's got some really cool things. So if you're using Waves 12, uh, you can reach out to us and I'll send you a, a beta version or even better if you want to do it yourself. If you go to preferences, you can enable use pre-release versions and uh, I'll probably have one up maybe next week. We'll see how things go. Anyway, so let's talk about what's new in this version, what's been updated. So I've got this sound here. It's got lots of lots of little regions and you can see Semi's done a pretty good job at auto identifying. That's what these little dark areas underneath each one mean. Now I could adjust that by clicking on this icon and I can say what the audio level is. Like if, it, if I needed it to be loud, you can see it's it's got to be that level or higher for it to identify it as a, a region. Or I can crank it down, same with the silence and minimum audio length and the silence length. Anyway, so I've got sound particles running right now. There's nothing uh, in this in this project. There's nothing in this particle group. And the way sound particles works is it likes to have individual little slices. So my transfer path right now is going radium to reaper, which is an empty folder. And the way this works is you just click and hold your mouse button down. So my mouse button is still down, and when it flashes, it tells me it's okay to drag. So when I start dragging, it swaps me to sound particles, and then I can drop it wherever I want. So there it is there. If I click render, it's now going to render in the background all those little slices and do its thing. I'm not capturing the output, but trust me, it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, and obviously this is the DAW that it's going to swap to. So in this case, it's sound particles. If I was running, say, like um, contact uh, as a standalone, it would show up there. If I was running, maybe contacting my DAW, I would just set my DAW to Pro Tools and then I could drag and drop essentially the files there. Uh, so that's a that's a neat little feature. Okay, let's move on to Radium here because I've done quite a bit in here and one of these features is really, really cool. So as you know, you got your however many slots, I've got six slots and it's got a bunch of built-in effects per slot. Um, so each one of these is going to process just the sound that I've got loaded into the slot. So what I've added, because there's so many now, is a pager just allows you to just scroll through the list. You can hold your mouse button down and it'll scroll through. Um, then you'll see plugin A and plugin B. And now this is going to get its list from the DSP rack. So you've got to make sure that you've actually scanned material in, like all your plugins. Um, and you, now you can use the DSP rack as your, your sort of your mastering chain. So think of this as your, your master bus. So you can put like a limiter on, multi-band compressor, maybe some like high pass, get rid of any that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's going to be the output of Radium. Each one of the slots gets processed through this VST or through this DSP rack, and then it's all combined, and then it goes into the processing rack right here. So let's have some fun with this. Let's see what we've got. So on this slot, I've got <laughs> laughter, and on this one, some scraping metal. So what we'll do is we'll call up plugin A, and you just all you do is click on the little plus sign. And we're going to call up the uh, Phoenix Verb. Let's do that. So you'll hear just the the laughter is being processed through the reverb, um, and the other one is being left clean. Now, when you toggle back and forth between the slots, it shows and hides the appropriate plugins. So if I had plugins up on this one, it would it would just show me the plugins on the current slot. It also tracks this, and also when you shrink. It just hides. So it just makes it a little easier to kind of manage. There's just so many possible windows you can have open at this point. Now, because I'm rushing this release a little bit, that there, there is the potential that a plugin can sort of take down Soundminer. Um, so let's say that you had a buggy plugin and you instantiated it and things were working well and you know you're messing around with stuff and then all of a sudden, poof, Soundminer crashes. Well, what Soundminer does is it saves in your Radium library path, if I reveal it. Right now there's just a file called backup.ra88, but there would be a, one called last rack state. And what Soundminer does when it launches is it tries to recall that state. Now if the plugin is buggy and uh, it crashes on launch again, or maybe it crashes when you try to clear out the rack, you're going to be kind of in a, a stuck position. So all you do is just delete that file. 
uh, or you can archive it somewhere. So what I want to do is detect if the program has crashed and go, okay, I'm going to about to re recall the state of radium. Do you want me to disable the plugins for now? So that's, that's something I'm going to work on, but because I've had to rush out this, uh, this release a little early, that's something just to be aware of. Okay. And you can show and hide the editor here. And if you want to start automating some of these parameters, so we'll just solo this. We'll do our mix. So all you can do is just move the parameter. You can right click one of these knobs and the one you last touched is here. That just makes it a lot easier than having to go through the entire list. So we'll say mix is the one I want to automate. So now when I move it, you can see it's moving it in Phoenix verb as well. And I could assign that to a controller. So this would be a MIDI controller. 21. Here's a little tip. If, you, if you're if not sure which one of your sliders on your MIDI controller does what, you can just choose one of these, like set your target and move it. So this one is actually 119. And I just cancel out of it by clicking off of it. So 119 right there. In the pre-release version I'm working on right now, it's going to show you up here what your controller, what the last controller number is that you moved. Anyway, so 119, I'm going to assign this to plugin A, macro one. When I do that, if I move it on my MIDI controller, it's now automating that parameter. <laughs> and of course, like everything else, you can rearrange these. So if I wanted to have the chopper, well, let's do before just to show you what this sounds like. So I'm going to go all the way up and my rate's like this. So this is now going to chop the audio up <laughs> like an amplitude modulator. Now, if I crank my mix up, now if I rearrange these, I'm now going to have reverb, the, the reverb, like original signal going into the chopper. So it's going to be chopping up the reverb now. Pretty cool, right? Okay. So let's say that I, this is maybe a heavy duty plugin, or maybe it introduces too much delay, or maybe I want to share this uh, patch or the sound with someone else and they don't have this plugin. Uh, I, I want to be able to print it. Now, what you would have to do before is you'd have to solo, hit record, do your thing, unsolo it, and then load it back in. But now, if you see here, there's a, a slot recorder. And what this, it works two ways. One, you can just tap it like you would, like just click on your mouse, mouse down and up, and it will start recording. Or you can hold your mouse down, and as long as you're holding it down, it will be recording, and when you mouse off, that's when it will stop. So it just all depends what kind of mode or how, like if you're just going to be recording a short sound, perhaps it might be easier to just go click, hold, and then release, and then it's recorded. Or if you know you're going to be like, okay, I'm going to need both of my hands. I'm going to click. It's now recording. And then if I click again, it stops recording. So even though I'm playing both of these sounds, I'm going to click it, do my performance. And then stop recording. And you can see there it is there. So I can play it. And it's just that slot. It's not the doesn't have the scraping metal in it. Um, it's also in this list right here. So I could do it a number of ways. I could load the sound in, uh, especially because you know it doesn't wait for a MIDI on. As soon as you hit record, that's when it's going to sp start recording the sound. It doesn't wait for a MIDI on like it does with this record. Uh, so you could. What was I going to say? Uh, I lost my trail of thought. Oh yeah. So you could load it. So let's load it back in. So here it is right here, the RA slot record. So all I have to do is just drag it onto a slot. And now I could truncate this up. I'll just solo it. I'll lower the volume a bit so don't blast our ears. And that's basically the effect printed. Now the reason it doesn't uh, wait for a MIDI on is a lot of times, you know, you might want to use something like salty grain, which is a, a granular effect and you can play sounds into it and then like sort of live capture it and then it creates this nice like huge spread it's kind of cool for doing magic sounds and that kind of stuff 
uh, in that case, the, the plugin will be doing whatever it is that you want to record. And as soon as you've got it in a state where it's like, it sounds good, you want to be able to click the record button. So that's why it doesn't wait for, for a note on. Now I will say that you can move this around as well. So if I want to record the output of the plugin before it goes into the chopper, so just to play this again, you can hear it's the reverb chopped. So we're going to do the same thing now, but because the recorder is after the plugin and before the chopper, I'll put this on another slot. You'll, you'll hear it's just the reverb. Cool, right? 